Welcome, this is the end of course algebra one practice test number three, question number 11. The question says, Sylvia recorded the total time of her daily commute each day for the last two weeks. She made the graph of her data shown below. So let's look at the graph for a second. What she's done is break her commute times into little subgroups, or into little groups, and then she indicated how many times those groups, or how many times her time, her commute times, fell into each one of these groups. So this is a frequency chart. The thing you have to know about a frequency chart is it's very difficult to find specific information. You can find information in terms of what the overall grouping of things happens to be, or you get a general picture of where things fall, but to find numeric data is very difficult because there's such a uh, wide swath of numbers that are possible, especially in this case when we group multiple numbers together. So let's look at the possible choices. The question's asking me which statement is, can be shown to be true based on the data. So A says the mean time Sylvie took to commute is 58 minutes. They got that data by uh, busting this in half and saying, well, between 56 and 60 is 58, so it's got to be the mean. That's not how a frequency chart works. Unless this number, this one day value is gigantic, it's not going to balance out these numbers enough to pull it all the way up to 58. You couldn't figure out it was 58 anyway. You'd be lucky if you could figure out it got towards the middle group. Frequency charts don't do that. Uh, for B, the mode time Sylvie took to commute is between 46 and 50 minutes. Now it's really easy to jump on the old bandwagon of this answer because you're thinking, well, it's the mode, so it's the one that happens the most, and this group happens the most. But the mode is the number that occurs the most in the data set. So what you're dealing with is a little bit of a difference in the sense that 46, say all of the numbers in this set were, all four of them are 52. All I have to do is have a reasonable distribution of things in this set and then all of a sudden my mode value is not uh, in this set so I can't say anything about mode. The next one says Sylvie took between 71 and 75 minutes commuting for one-fifth of the total number of days. We have to count them all. 2 and 6 is 8 plus 4 more is 12, 13, 14. For some reason Sylvie commutes every day of the week. Apparently she does it for non-work reasons. Maybe she has a significant other in the city. I don't know. I don't know Sylvie. She doesn't exist, I don't think. Anyway, so to do one-fifth, I'm going to multiply 14 times one-fifth. And if you have your TI-84 plus handy, that's what I'm going to be using because I'm just basically too lazy right now to do it by hand. Um, so I'm going to go over and do 14. I need to erase this because it's driving me insane before I start typing. It isn't. So I'm going to do 14 times... And I'm going to hit alpha y equals to get my fraction menu to pop up, one-fifth. So that would be the equivalent of uh, 14 fifths, and I need to go, I could have just divided that. What a waste of time. Um, I want to go to math here, and then go to change to a decimal. So for some reason, I did it the long way. Just do the division on your own. So 14 divided by 5. There, 2.8. But the section that's between 71 and 75 is only one day. And you'll be able to see that when I touch the screen here. Uh, the one day here is not 2.8. So C is not the correct answer. The final one, D, uh, so 46 and 50 <clears throat> is more than 2 fifths. So 2 fifths of 14. I'm going to sort of save myself the headache of using the fraction menu this time. And just remember that I can just do 14 times 2 divided by 5 and get 5.6. So what I'm looking for is the number in this subset to be bigger than 5.6. And it is. It's 6. So the answer to number 11 is D. Now, it was really easy to jump on the bandwagon here. This one kind of was confusing. This one seems like visually maybe. So make sure that you do it all the way out and know what the limitations of each type of graph are, and you'll be fine.